Memorandum of Understanding between the City of Dunwoody and the Cab County Board of Education, Bill Riley. Thank you, Mayor and Council. We're passing out just a, a one little red line where the school district asks us to be a little more specific in uh, our item four. It does not change what we're doing, but they, they wanted to have more language on that, and they finally determined who they wanted to sign this in a Memorandum of Understanding. This is a memorandum of understanding that uh, would, uh, would that uh, clarifies the methodology by which the uh, school board will uh, get uh, certificates of occupancy from the from the city and outlines basically the uh, existing law on that. Uh, very, if you've seen my little executive summary, it's pretty simple. The uh, the uh, fire marshal will do the fire safety review. And uh, certify that that all, and do it. We'll do the uh, inspections of the fire safety review, and the uh, city will do the uh, land disturbance, and uh, and certify that, and the school board will uh, <coughs> go through a process wherein they they have their uh, own engineering and uh, programming that they will go through an engineer. The engineer will certify the. Uh, plan process uh, the, and the execution of the same back to the city and the city will upon uh, review of all that and making sure that it's all in order will issue certificates of occupancy. I'm open for any questions. Okay. Uh, who wants to crank? Anybody want to? Anybody? Jerry? Jerry, Doug, jump in. Uh, Bill, take me through. Are we allowed to charge the county for our process of um, doing the, you know, site plans and issuing issuing the certificate of occupancy? The school board takes the position that they are not required to pay any city or county any funds to uh, go forward and do any uh, permitting process. And I, I I don't think that's one that we'd want to get in the middle of. Um. Take me through, you know, right now, if, if we go with this memorandum of understanding, DeKalb would be required through what we call the AE, their, their engineer, to do their inspection process and I guess certify to us that it is up to uh, our building codes or the ICC. Is that, is that what would happen? Well, I, I think that, uh, that that's our limited partial part of it, but you need to go back to the state school board the state school board has a series of regulations, <clears throat> and their re regulations, um, they, the uh, school board, the county school board, or the sc county school district, has to go through the entire process of permitting through the state school board before they ever come to us. And they have a, they have a, a series of regulations wherein they, uh, bear with me, I have it all here. They have, they go through uh, part one of the guidelines require planning documents be submitted to the facility service unit of the State Department of Education for review and approval. Then the preliminary plans, then a check set of plans, project manuals, and finally final plans and a project manager, manual. <coughs> part two states that the preliminary plans include project plans and specifications, a site plan, floor plans, elevations and sections, Heating, ventilation, and air condition requirements, and construction delivery methods. They, thereafter, they go through a programming piece including food service, media, vocation, Department of Human Resources, engineering, and they also submit their plans to the state fire marshal prior to anything coming to us. Part of that part of that legislative scheme, though, within the uh, within the uh, state regulation requires their engineer to certify all the documents, that all of this is according to code. And then only then and after they have had all of these certifications by the state that have already pre-approved it, then the, their regulations say 
then you may then you shall get whatever local permits are required, and that's that's under the state education, the board of education how they control the county the county districts. So they've already done it all once that way. They've already done the the state scheme has the. AE or the registered engineer do the same sealing process and guarantee to the state board of education who has already done the same process before it gets to us and that's their methodology and that's the same methodology that we are employing here which is allowed by state law for us also got it and as a follow-up is the state what standard is the state required to inspect to is it the ICC what do or, or do we know? There is there there there's a whole uh, regimen that the uh, Department of Education play, play, places on them, and I believe it, it it does require the state codes. If I go back and verify that, but and I know we update our codes every so often. I, I just don't know. I'm assuming their codes would be the same as our codes, but but not sure. I'll give you I'll give you the wording. I have it right here. All right, Regulation 165.4.16 states, further design and renovation of all educational facilities shall be in accordance with all applicable pr provisions of the latest edition of guidelines available from the Department of Education. That, that is the guidelines, and they must meet the, they meet the, uh, Regulation 165.4.16 dash four dash point one oh the local school system shall obtain uh, for all plans and specifications for the department of education state fire marshal and georgia department of resources any uh, or any other federal state agency that may be applicable and that is the um, they must follow their uh, authorization process so I, I don't know what the state school board is. I would only imagine it's the same as the rest of us. We update ours based on what uh, the, um, the state does. We're required to meet. Uh, they, they pick the, the which, whichever edition it is that they want for the electrical code or any other code, and then we follow that. We follow and adopt those same codes. All right, so just hypothetically, the Austin Elementary School that's going to be built would have to get the school board's got to go to the state, get the state to sign off state fire marshal before they come to us to, you know. This is this re the, the review that we're requiring by the architects in, or the engineering firm uh, as part of this methodology of review. Uh, they've already done it once before to, and then they'll be using the, I'm sure they'll be using the same people that they sent to the state Board of Education because they have to have all their sealed plans with them and it's all been done, it's all been reviewed once and then they'll go through it and they'll, they'll do the same thing. They can't begin construction until they have gone through the entire process through the state system before they even get to, to us. Um, all right, I'll let uh, others ask away but I may have a follow up here in a minute. Good. Okay. So, council members and, and Bill, I think the fact that we have a voluntary MOU before us tonight highlights the gaps in Georgia law about the allocation of enforcement powers, and that's the key word, is enforcement powers of one jurisdiction over another. Public statements of opinion, I would argue even hyperbole, have been blogged about and posted on social media about the enforcement power of the city of Dunwoody over another governmental entity. As with opinions, it's okay to disagree, but lately the public statements have turned into allegations of negligence by the city, and I think it's time to clear the air on who has city code enforcement powers over uh, another governmental entity such as the DeKalb County School District. So Bill is our attorney. 
I got some questions for you on this MOU, and specifically, I'm focused in on the city's enforcement power. Yes, sir. Is DeKalb County School District a separate sovereign government entity? Yes, sir, it is. Other than fire codes and erosion control or land disturbance, which I'll talk about in a minute, is there a Georgia statute that grants the city of Dunwoody with city code enforcement authority over another sovereign government, such as the school district? No, sir. In fact, uh, and, uh, in their rules uh, and regulations 160-5-4.10, uh, uh, all the processes that they're required to go under, which include after all their state, uh, state Board of Education and state fire marshal processes that they send back to us, if they, and then their requirement to go to us is only through the state law. That's the only reason they have to come to us in any event. And it, 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 uh, this uh, under 165 4.10, it says that uh, the regulations specifically state that failure to follow the plan approval process designated for the school boards shall be a violation of state law. So we would have no code, we would not have code enforcement powers over that. Those violations are state law violations and they would not be code, code violations for the municipality. So, and I excluded the fire codes. So who provides fire plan reviews in Dunwoody? The, 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 De the DeKalb County Fire Department under an intergovernmental agreement. Okay. And then who provides fire code enforcement in Dunwoody? Who writes the fire citations? The DeKalb County Fire Marshals. Who provides the fire code inspections in Dunwoody? The DeKalb County Fire Marshals. Is the school district obligated to obtain a certificate of occupancy? And if so, which government entity requires it? Yes, they are required to get certificate of occupancies, but it's the State Board of Education that requires them to do that. Given that the State Board of Education requires the school district to obtain a CO and DeKalb County uh, Fire provides fire plan reviews and fire code enforcement in Dunwoody, is there any other city code enforcement available to Dunwoody. No, uh, the only thing that I would say is we, we can force, enforce land disturbance and erosion control. Okay. If the school district fails to obtain a CO, which they have done in the past, as required by the State Board of Education, does the city of Dunwoody have liability exposure on that failure of the school district? No, sir. And we have no enforcement power to make them obtain the CO? No, in fact, we, in fact the enforcement power is, state, is a state law violation as, as provided within the State Board of Education rules. Does this MOU create any new obligations of the school district or of the city? No, sir, it does not. Does the MOU result in the city of Dunwoody abdicating its responsibilities in any way? No, sir. It, this is what we have done is we have memorialized the statutory scheme that has been the outline of state law all along. This is a voluntary MOU, and if the school district fails to follow the MOU, does the city have any enforcement capability to make the school district follow the MOU? Uh, only to the extent that uh, would be land disturbance, but not all of these other things that have been talked about. Okay. An allegation was made by our local county commissioner and our local school board representative that the city of Dunwoody has shirked its responsibilities with respect to the school district. As you've been very close to this, are you aware of any shirking or negligence by our staff as it relates to the school district? No, sir. Every time uh, the we have a we have authority to issue, we have no authority to enforce the issue the them to come, and every time that they have come to the uh, the school board or the school district has come to us, we have gone as far through a, through the process as they have desired to go, and whenever they did not when they didn't come, 
We couldn't force them to come. When they came and didn't finish out, we couldn't force them to finish out. But in every instance that they did come and they worked through the process, we completed the process. And then lastly, Bill, um, the process that you described for Doug in great detail, uh, is there anything else about that process that we need to know specifically as a, for instance, uh, where, where else has that process been used? Well, when, when they built the new, the new school on Isom Road over in Sandy Springs, that's the, this is the exact same process that Sandy Springs used with the Fulton County School Board to go through that as an example. Okay. Well, in my view, this settles the issue of what we're able to control. The questions have been asked and they've been answered. And it also mirrors the answers I've received from my research with other attorneys in cities outside DeKalb County. The MOU spells out the responsibilities for the school district, the city, and DeKalb Fire. And just as it's been all along, it's up to the school district to follow through as the city is without city code enforcement authority against another government entity. If we desire the city to have more city code enforcement authority over another government entity, we must ask our state legislators to enact a state statute to provide the cross-jurisdiction authority. We should revisit this when we set our legislative priorities for the next session of the General Assembly. And that concludes my questions, Mayor. Okay, Terry. Okay, Pam, go ahead. I mean. Okay, so I have, I'm not as organized. I'm a little more free thinking. But I want to start with a question, which is, has the issue of one government paying fees to another ever been litigated? The, I don't know the answer okay. to that uh, offhand, but uh, the, I believe there is, I think there's a prohibition to it. Okay. Every school system that I've ever worked with has told me that they are not going to pay their, the fees. So, so one of the concepts in Georgia law is that one government can't give another government something, right, without getting something in exchange. Well, there's no, there's no gratuities between right between government. I don't know if this impacts that. So, the I'm going to step way back if it's okay. So Mr. Lunston, who's now left, said that no COs have been issued by the city since 2009, and I don't know if he meant for buildings or for trailers. Do we know? We don't know. It's, it's both. Okay. So what I am struggling with is that it seems to me that it was on the school system to get their COs. Am I correct? You're so if I come to you and I say I'm going to add on to my house and I do it without getting a permit, if code enforces, enforcement catches me, then the city knows. But if they don't ever catch me, the city doesn't know that I'm doing this and I never get a CO. And it's almost like the school system is trying to fly under the radar and is, is breaking state, certainly breaking the state board rules, correct? Yes, ma'am. By not doing it. Yes, ma'am. Um, and it, to me, there's an... an my concern, which isn't really ours to solve, but it's a larger question is, is this may have been done with intention. In other words, the school board, the school system may have chosen, I mean, they know they have to get COs. These are not people that are inexperienced in the process, right? Because when my kids were at Chestnut a long time before 2009, there were trailers delivered and we could, the kids couldn't get in them because there was no CO. And then, because they couldn't get a CO because of one issue or another from, this is pre-city, from DeKalb County. So somewhere between, say, 2005 and 2009, the school system stopped asking. Um, in theory, trailers certainly could show up, right? And you might not even know. You might not, the school system might not even tell you. Um, or work, electrical work or roof could be replaced. Obviously, we know that's happened. And they're not coming to the city to do anything, right? That's correct. And so if our code enforcement staff is out driving around and they see that overnight a PTO, a PTA has put up, say, a backlit sign, do we have any enforcement authority? No. We don't, okay. have, any, we don't have any authority over signage with, uh, on, uh, their property. on their properties. And so when the, um, the trailers or a building is built, 
I do not understand, and so this isn't really a question for our staff, but it's I do not understand how in the world that, that step in the process the school system chose to ignore. It, there's just it's inexcusable. So it means a fire marshal never came out. I assume is that what we think happened? We don't know if the fire marshal went out or not. We do know that the fire marshal did not write violations. Right, but that doesn't tell us that he was whether he or she was there or not. Right. That is correct. We don't know if they inspected. And so. While there can be some debate about what our role, I mean, I think it's you know clear, but the bigger picture issue to me is that this is an utter failure on the part of the school system to do what they know is required. And do we know for certain that they go to the state board? I have no knowledge as to whether or not they're following the requirements With of the state board or not. And the state board has requirements for trailers as well as buildings, right? Or the state board uh, would those they're really not trailers they're manufactured right, buildings. manufactured buildings there's state law that allows manufactured buildings to be placed right. on property with the exception that uh, that uh, that uh, cities and counties may regulate that uh, but they regulate it through a zoning process on manufactured buildings so it's really there's a state law that says you can use manufactured buildings and that there's a certificate there's a certificate of occupancy uh, that's that if they meet a certain requirement that's on a that's on a little and correct me if I've got my public work my uh, community development people here still mm -hmm. all right if I'm if I uh, if I overstep it because they're the experts there's a there's there's a piece that's on that on that manufactured building that says it's been built in accordance with all the standards right. that are required and and that's and that is what would be looked at to see whether or not they had a spec spec plate on there and that would be the extent that we would do a certificate right. of occupancy based on that plate being sit, sitting on there right and main and, and meeting the fire codes right and if there was some land disturbance that, that re, of, of the significance that would require any land disturbance okay. permits from us and that's it so what ha I'm, I'm circling back around because it's just kind of boggling my mind the school system can come in on a weekend and knock trees down, never tell us they're going to do it, and n and never file for a CO, and we're pretty powerless from y'all's take to, to penalize them, correct? The power to penalize the uh, the staff at the school system goes uh, goes to the state board, mm -hmm. and it's a, they've they've does the the rules that are that have been promulgated and. Uh, or say that it's a violation of state law, so that would be that you could go to the. So, if we wanted to, we or me could file a complaint with the state board tomorrow that DeKalb had all these trailers and never got COs. Well, we you might want to do a freedom of information to make determination whether they had. Right, right. Um, but first, I'd have to get them. So, I, um, and this is what Fulton has been doing too, the Fulton schools. We did that on the ro on the school that, that they built on Isom Road, right at where Pitts changes to Isom over there. Yes. But what about the other new? Is it just varying, or I, I do you not don't know, know how the process went on the, uh, that okay. later one. Okay. This is this is a process that's allowed by state law. There's a state statute that allows this as a methodology to use. It mirrors the st it mirrors the um, review process that the state board. Of education does on the, the these same plans, uh, it's just used. It's just a, basically a second review that that has already occurred at the state board of education. So, Kevin, I have a question for you. When a contractor, uh, in the normal course of business, a contractor doing big contract work, they are supposed they generally would follow normal. Bus I'm sorry, you have to go to the microphone. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I get it. normal operating procedures, right? And so, in the normal course of business, I would think the manufactured what do we call them classroom buildings that that contractor would normally know they're supposed to seek a permit. Yes. And so again, I circle back around to the intention behind all this, which I think that there was an intention on behalf of the school system to avoid doing what they were supposed to do. And I think that we've gotten the the argument has gotten framed in such a way that that um, the important point has been lost, which is that the school system is not doing what they're supposed to do. Um, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Go ahead. 
Uh, just a couple of things I would add. Um, I would agree with what Mr. Riley has shared with you tonight. And for the nine years that I've been involved here at the City of Dunwoody, uh, we've been consistent in the way we've addressed this issue. Uh, there have been a number of times that uh, we've had the school board come to us with staff that would let us know about a project, could even at times uh, give us a set of plans. We have issued review comments in the past, but that's usually where it stopped. Um, they've either chosen not to address those issues or had them addressed in different manners. It's possible they would go back to the state and get their issues addressed down there. And so we had a drainage issue at Peachtree that they chose to ignore on the field. I don't know if you remember that when they put in the field. Do you, have you seen that in other school systems or do they usually fix what the local government asked them to in plan review? Do you know? Or it varies? So, so the, the drainage issue like you're referring right. to, um, I'm not sure that we've got a jurisdiction to be able to address that. Now we okay. can address, as was previously stated, erosion and sediment control right. issues. But what I'm trying to understand is if, if Gwinnett puts in a building in Duluth, and that's not right because it's Lawrenceville, and Lawrenceville city, the uh, community development staff tells them something, do they usually fix it or you don't know? So our involvement has typically been considered a courtesy right. and we have at times asked for things that might be local issues, mm -hmm. but then they're at they're our, our mercy to address those issues or not. Okay such as the trees you mentioned earlier. <clears throat> right, well, it seems to me that in the recent cases since 2009, because we know they were getting them before at some point, that they were purpose, the school system is purposely evading doing what they're supposed to do, at least as by what's required by state law. So, and we don't get to enforce state law. The state board has to enforce state law. Or the attorney general, attorney general. district attorney, those, are, those would okay. be the avenues you might go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Don Yetham. I guess I'm trying to understand the aspect of going back to the state. We don't really know whether DeKalb went back to the state or not. We do not. That's, that is within the legislative scheme of the, of the State Board of Education okay. to, uh, of supervising the local school districts. And we could get that information with a simple email communication with them, or how hard would it be to get that type of information? I, I would assume that you could do it through freedom of information. What is the, I mean, I'm fully in agreement with the MOU in the sense of making sure that we are enforcing and making sure that our children are safe and doing everything in our power to make that happen. What is the urgency of this agreement tonight? Well, I, I know that the, the, the school board wants to, be, to get this and we certainly want to do it. Uh, there's been a, uh, there's certainly been a lot of discussion, and that's why we've gotten this done as, as, as expeditiously as we can. So we outline all of the, um, it's simply a restatement of all the responsibilities that everybody already has. And, and it, is, it sets up the, uh, the steps to the pattern that it will happen to ensure that it happens. Uh, as, the, as my council member previously said, that they have they have, they outwardly has have now promised that they will do that, but a memorandum of understanding is just a statement of how we will do it, and it's not it doesn't have any responsibilities to each other, except to the extent that we've outlined the responsibilities that we already have under state law. Right. I just want to make sure that we are doing our due diligence to get to all the information we need to make a decision that we have vetted it with the state if so needed and that we answer questions to other elected officials. I'm just not sure of the timeliness that we need to do this tonight, but I am in favor of this general generality. So I'll defer to others with other comments. Jim, yeah. yeah. Two things. Um, one, to, to piggyback on John's comments, I, I, I don't perceive that we are in a huge hurry. There's nothing that says we must do this tonight. So for, for that reason, in order to make sure we fully vet what we're considering entering into here, that, that I'm in favor of deferral so that we can check out a few things um, and, and more fully. 
um, although I'm, I'm not against this. Second, um, in talking about the Georgia Department of Education, I find uh, at the GADOE website, in their facility services division, there's a large store of documents used in the school construction process, one of which um, under the section titled Architectural Review Guideline 3, titled Guideline for Submission of Documents for Review of Planning, Bidding, and Construction of Educational Facilities. And within that document, there, there, I'm, I'm gonna, this is boring, but I'm going to read it anyway. Um, prior to final approval, these this are documents that must be submitted for plan review to this state body by Georgia law, from what I see here. Um, prior to final approval, submit one set of complete plans, including facility code, space grade and or subject, and or function assignment for each space with its associated net square footage and project manual, manual, which is the specifications for each improvement or project, including civil, architectural, structural, plumbing, heating, and electrical work, along with a copy of any previous comments with response. There, there were previous documents submittals to this board that are required in preliminary phases, including food service, media, vocational, Department of Human Resources, engineers for a review by this office. So the state board is clearly reviewing architect, you know, complete document sets, preliminary document sets. They are reviewing documents. Now maybe we should, you know, before we discuss this again, we should have a conversation with this state board and make sure they are doing what we would consider a complete plan review. But by my read of this, they are indeed doing that. So that, that's I just wanted to bring that to light. I thought it worth bringing to everybody's attention. Um, Go ahead, Doug. I, I think I know the answers to these, Bill, but kind of kind of help me through them. If because I want to kind of move past. I, yeah, it sounds like. State board's not doing what they are, but let's address what, you know, anything that we could possibly do on on our end. I'm assuming that if we change zoning that says, you know, no school trailers anywhere in Dunwoody and put that as part of the R zoning, that that would not be enforceable against the school district. Is that correct? I would think it would not. Okay. Because the school controls their, we can't, they control their own zone. Yes. What if we went from another route and put some and passed an ordinance in our land development code that said, in, in effect, um, no school trailers shall be constructed in Dunwoody? Does that give us any more power, or does that give the school board a reason to come back and and and, and say, well, you're 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 effectively zoning, you know, changing the condition? In other words, do you think that stand has a better chance of being upheld? Well, it, the the case that everybody cited, the DeKalb County, uh, the, the the Decatur versus DeKalb County case, uh, it only outlines two things, and and frankly, that's not even really all the way on point because this this comes out of the this comes out of the State Board of Education uh, law and promulgated rules that have the effect of law. Uh, that that only gave cities base, basically or two things that they could they they've ruled on that you can do it's land it's it's land disturbance erosion control fire fire safety okay. you have not hit that by moving at another place okay so what you're saying is so we may be able to regulate trailers as it relates to land disturbance and fire but just a, a blanket, thou shalt not have school trailers in Dunwoody is, you think, maybe going too far. In, in, unless you want to litigate that for several years and have an amicus brief from every school system in the state of Georgia who uses, uh, uses manufactured buildings as a methodology for expanding po school populations and spend two or three years in who knows how many hundreds of thousands of dollars and probably get a bad result. I would say that that's not th a place you would want to wander to. Okay. Thank you. 
You know, uh, I got a couple of questions, Bill, but I have an opening statement is, you know, basically this all boils down to, you call it manufactured buildings. I'm from a small town. We call it trailers. And I've never seen a trailer until I came to Georgia, by the way. Uh, and so, you know, that's where it all boils down to. That's, that's where this all festers up from. Nobody, they don't. You know, people that are jumping around don't like trailers. I don't like trailers at all, at all, not at all. And, of course, that's one of the big reasons that, you know, I'm a pusher for uh, uh, local control of your schools because I think we could, uh, you know, let's talk a couple things. Are they equal to a brick-and-mortar building as far as the atmosphere for teaching? I sure don't think so. You know, I've spoken in some of them around here, and I know several of you have too. Uh, you know, are they as safe as a brick-and-mortar? Well, not in a tornado, I bet you they're not. So, you know, there's definitely some factors out there. And let me let me those three things. Let's go back to those three things, Bill. The questions that, you know, the erosion and sediment control, land disturbance, and the last one is fire. And basically, as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, fire all boils around the uh, evacuation of, uh, capability of the building. Is, is, am I anywhere close to that? Mayor, we have an intergovernmental agreement with the DeKalb County Fire Service that uh, we've had several iterations of it. But our intergovernmental agreement covers both fire safety evacuation issues, but also it also includes plan review that the fire marshal does. Okay. Uh, we don't do that. They do that. So part of the process is, and what's outlined in this uh, memorandum of understanding, is that the fire marshal shall continue to do what he has done or she has done under our 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 intergovernmental agreement with the cab county that is they review all the plans for fire safety they go through all the make sure do all the calculations to make sure all the the sprinklers are sprinkled and and all the things are run in the right ways and probably ask our council member more than i could could tell you how it all works but but that's what they do and they approve those plans that say they comport with the uh with fire codes that have been adopted by the state of Georgia and subsequently by all of us. And and then they come back and they certify to us that it's all in compliance. They also do the inspections for fire, fire safety, uh, for compliance. And once they certify that it's all in compliance, that's the point in time that it comes within our purview to issue the certificate of occupancy. Okay, and you know, one of, one of the items that's been uh, battered around here, around town here in various blogs or whatever, is the fact that the, the fire marshal, the Cab County has their own fire, the Cab County Schools has their own fire marshal. But we have, our fire marshal is the Cab County itself, from the Cab County itself. That's our IGA. So that would, y you know, that makes it a little cleaner to me when, you know, the fire marshal doesn't work for the school board. That's kind of like letting the, you know, the fox in the hen house. That was a previous issue, wasn't it? Uh, the, uh, but uh, so, you know, the other, the other issue is, you know, has there ever been a history that you know of, Bill, where the State Board of Education has actually cited a school district or a school for a violation of the codes? I, 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 I don't know it, but uh, so others might. The lady in my right's got the answer. The answer is yes. Uh, the uh, let me see. I got a couple more things here. I've been writing all over the place here while you guys are talking there. Uh, the MOU uh, does not does not allow either side to enforce against the other side. In the basic in the basic definition of an MOU is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, we were, we were told earlier, and, and uh, Lynn jumped on this, about having uh, permits or uh, COs from the city since 2009. Uh, is that is that been verified anywhere by us? Did, did we never, ever done that? We did it through an open rent. Yes, that's been verified. Okay, thank you. So they, we have not. Yeah, not. Not since 2009. Okay. Okay. And the payment of fees, you know, it, that's just a gentleman's agreement? Is that what we can confer that to, that uh, nobody ever pays the, the payment of fees? 
I, I believe there's some state law on that subject, but I couldn't I couldn't tell you with with uh, certainty on tonight because I have not reviewed it. But I can tell you that the uh, the school boards will certainly fight to try to make sure that you don't. And okay. I, believe, I believe there is law on the subject. I just don't want to tell you there is when I'm I hadn't reviewed it and okay. be Thank able you. to tell you for certain. You know, one of the problems we've had here, uh, if I as I recall in the past, is that you know basically you know we've informed thing the uh, the school board of things that needed to be done, and uh, you know usually you know folks uh, do things when you you show them need to be done, but then uh, some of them haven't been done, and then you're getting ready to open school, and they don't have a CO. Uh, so then it boils down to the issue of, you know, who's the bad cop in this? And I can just tell you, uh, there's some folks here who will disagree with me. I can point to one of them right now, but then he's a friend of mine, but I won't, so I won't do that. But I will tell you that th there, there are instances of that, and w if it does happen, and we say, oh, no, you're not going to put uh, Johnny and Susie in there, I, I think the the rain of, of the rash of, would come down heavily on us instead of the school, in my opinion, because you know what? The parents are counting on Johnny and Susie being on school on that day. So I, I don't know. Has there been any incidences of this at all when, this, when somebody, uh, county or school, said, we're not giving you a CO. You can keep the kids home. Fire marshal used to keep the cab from opening, okay. um, you know, fairly regularly, uh, or opening trailers. I, I, I'm more because the trailers are certified. The, the building, the lack of COs for a whole school building, is that what we think has happened? Like we think Dunwoody Elementary, which I think opened, well, they may have been before 2009. No, no, it was opening after 2009. Um, was the um, doesn't well, have a CO. That's what we think. We don't have one on I, record. I, I don't know. You know, that's that's the thing. It just uh, you know, you, you, you we're talking about uh, you know what. Uh, w okay, in that case, it was the Cab County Fire Marshal. In the case where we stand up and say, you know what, we told you to fix the toilet. The toilet's not fixed. You're not going to get a seal. I can only imagine. I can only imagine who's going to take the wrath. It's actually what happened with the field at Peachtree. There was a lot of political pressure from parents to just for the city to get out of the way. If I remember correctly, I wasn't yeah. on council. I don't, I don't remember that, but uh, you know, my memory doesn't go back that far. So, anyway, you know, you know that that's some of the items you know that uh, that we're talking about here. You know, what we're really trying to do here is establish maybe some type of standard operational procedure. That uh, that is a common ground that can be a win-win for everybody. You know, the city uh, we we're, we're a win because of the students. So, you know, it's it's also my understanding, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that the the, the county w the county school board would kind of like to uh, use this MOU as kind of a uh, standard, uh, if you will, agreement going forth with other schools. And other, uh, you know, other cities or whatever the entity is, uh, to kind of stand standardize this operating procedure. And I, I think from that standpoint, it's good. You know, uh, it's not enforceable, but you know, MOUs uh, usually, if you you put one of these in the business in Washington and you do an MOU, and uh, you don't abide by it, next time you want an MOU, uh, you can go uh, pound sand somewhere because you're not going to get it. So I don't know if that's, that's applicable here or not. But, uh, you know, the whole thing boils down to one thing here, the, the whole thing that brought the fester up. It, it brings it up every time. Very honestly, I'll be darned if I'd want my child in one of them. So, so that's just the way it goes. Uh, but, you know, maybe others, maybe others don't mind. I do. I would. Uh, so uh, from that standpoint, you know, we can move forward. And wh whatever we want to do tonight, uh, you know, as far as the only thing that you uh, you can uh, do to defer this would be to, to have more public input 
But, you know, uh, how much more public input would you get? No, you'd probably get some more. But it would all boil down to the simple fact to me that nobody wants trailers. Uh, or, excuse me, Bill, manufactured buildings. And uh, that's uh, that's what it all boils down to, to me. If that's that's where the rubber meets the road, in my opinion, uh, completely. So I'll uh, open the floor up for everybody who wants to make a motion, and then we'll go from there. Kevin, you want to say something? Sure, I just wanted to make sure you got a complete answer on an earlier question about inspections and COs on the existing facilities that are out there. At the time an open records request was done, uh, there had not been any, but in recent days, literally uh, late last week, uh, the school board did reapproach us and we did complete some inspections on a total of 17 um, of these manufactured facilities that uh, did not have COs through their research. And uh, so we've been out there doing that. Um, I believe we have most of them completed at this time. We have identified some issues and We've notified them of those issues, and um, we're under an understanding that they're addressing those issues. Okay. One other thing I think that, again, is, you know, I brought up another issue, but the other thing would be, you know, if they're going to have a an engineer inspect their, their buildings, it would be, in my opinion, more open, more transparent, and everything else if the engineer was an independent contractor and not an employee of the DeKalb County School Board or City of Dunwoody far as that's concerned either one okay that's all I got to say I'll just see what anybody's got to say if we got any motions or what do we want to do here can I make a motion I'd like to move that we approve the MOU and specifically the one with the minor red line addition that was passed out tonight second and I'll speak to it okay it's been moved by Terry second by Pam that we approve the MOU as amended with the red line correction. If there's an interest, uh, John, I know you talked about maybe talking to the state board and all like that. That's great, but that doesn't impact the MOU. The MOU talks about what we do, what the city, what the city does, what the school district does, what the DeKalb County Fire Marshal does um, in that process. It has no bearing on, on the state board whatsoever. That may be a worthy thing to pursue but this is all about what we do here locally and the process we follow. I don't see any reason to come back and visit this issue again in two weeks. I think tonight's the night to vote on it. If we could, Terry, since you made the motion, do you mind reading ch paragraph four with the red line issue just to read it into the record since you made the motion? Thank you. So this is in paragraph four, and the the sentence reads, where, where applicable, this is the final sentence of paragraph four, where applicable, DCSD will submit site plans, this is the minor red line addition, including but not limited to accessibility plans and life safety plans, that's the end of the red line addition, to DeKalb County Fire Marshal and City. The city will review site plans where applicable and where, when compliant, issue land disturbance permits. Satisfy you, John? Yes, sir. Okay. Danny, well, a couple things real fast. Danny, did you want to change the language in number two to insert the word independent or something? or because that was your concern? You know, it is a concern of mine, and, uh, you know, I don't know where we stand as far around the table here, but I think that I think that's kind of, I think that's in a very important issue, right. and if I was on the other side, I think it would be a very important issue for me also because it takes away any of the, uh, mm, you know, the good buddy network, hmm. and, well, at least it should anyway to a, a greater extent. Mayor, if I could address that. Uh, Go ahead, Bill. It says uh, the DeKalb County School District shall engage the services of an authorized engineering and inspection services firm. Mm -hmm. So uh, with credentials uh, for construction inspection services to perform the building plan review. I believe that is the anticipation of the, uh, intergo uh, um, the memorandum of understanding that that is, that is the... Uh, 
that it is a third party firm to do that uh, under the understanding. Okay, would putting the word in there uh, just clarify that then? I mean, because to me, I you know, I I've, I've got a check and a question mark by that all the time. Since it's uh, shall engage the service of an authorized engineer inspection firm, uh, with the you know it could be authorized and it still could be working for the county. But how about a, if you just insert the word shall we engage the services of an independent authorized engineer inspection firm? That, that, if, if, if that's the will of the council, we can send it back to them with that extra word in there. I, I would like to add that, so I'll, I'll amend the motion to add the word independent on uh, the one, two, third paragraph, first line, after, uh, uh, after the word and and before authorized. It's paragraph number two. Oh, the first, you're not using the first one? This no, is the one that. Yeah, I've got it. I've got that. But uh, I've got it. I just found one, two, three. Your number, paragraph two. That's what the two means. Yeah, but I, let, me let me show you this. See that three back here in the second page? If you bring that over here, that's and it's three, that means that one right there. It's a, it's a loose point, okay? Yeah. Let's just say this paragraph right here. How about that? Okay. Okay. Uh, I made an amendment. Is anybody? Uh, uh, yeah. They haven't approved this yet. So Has this been voted on by the school board? No. I don't know that it will be voted on by the school board. The uh, staff is authorized to uh, uh, sign uh, non-financial uh, memorandums or under understanding. I, that'll be a policy determination that'll be made by them. Thank you. Okay. Is there a second? There isn't a second. The motion dies. Let's go back to the original motion. All in favor? I'm going to say one more thing. So, just want to make sure I understand this before I vote on it. This doesn't actually give us any power to tell them no, to, to force them to do anything, just that they're going to do their own inspection. And if we say you need it, I mean, I'm making an arbitrary thing up, but we say you need it 10 trees and they put in six, there's no consequences. I don't think we can tell them to put in 10 trees. Right, because it would be under the zoning code. But uh, but I, I would say that under they, they should conform with all of our codes, which actually conform with all of, of the codes that we're told that we shall adopt by the state. We don't really have uh, determinations of how, which version of the fire code or which version of the electrical code or the plumbing code or anything else. We have to adopt the ones that, that the state's already adopted. But uh, we, they, have, they have to follow our codes. That's what the, and that's what the, the architectural and engineering for, or the, the engineering authorized engineering inspection services firm is going to do is they're going to verify to us that they have met the codes that are required and they have inspected those and that the inspections have taken place and they have passed. And then will our engineering people look at it too or no? Okay, not the building, but will they look at the paperwork that's submitted? They will review the paperwork for conformance with this memorandum of understanding that they have, they have because the the, in, the authorized engineering firm right. that seals that, they take the they take the liability for that. You know, the first liability, of course, is with the school right. school board. But when they when they when they s s seal it, they take all the liability to for that it is correct. We 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 do that in a lot of as built cases. Somebody goes in and adds adds a 
add something on the back of the house. They don't come get permits. Yeah, we're not we're not going to permit it. They go in. They get a registered engineer who goes through it, looks at the process, draws plans up, has as built, seals them, certifies that it was built according to the codes. We issue a CIA, and this is uh, that is a the, that's the alternative methodology that we use on more regular basis than doing the school board, but it's this, it's the same process. Okay. And before we vote, I want to make a comment about portable classrooms because there is not, in, that I can think of in 19 years of doing public education work, a school that is desirable that doesn't have trailers at some point or another. It is a reflection of the quality of the school that people want to go there. And it's very hard under state law. You can't. You have to use five projections only five years out. That's how they fund school construction. It's very complicated, and it is a challenge. But the reality is, is that is that it is a sign of a school that people want to send their children to. That is what happens with trailers, and so they are less common than they were as growth plateaus in some parts of Metro Atlanta. But for the most part, desirable schools have more students than they have seats for. I just uh, let me just comment on that real quickly. You're talking public schools only, right? Because uh, private schools, I know all kinds of them that have three applicants for every one seat. Right, but Denny, they can trailers. control their numbers. Public schools take all comers, and I yeah. think we know that. Right, and uh, to piggyback on what Lynn said, to be um, specific to Dunwoody High School, right now teachers are sharing their rooms with planning time, and they don't have enough rooms for the kids they have there now. So are trailers a preferred method? No, but I can tell you from talking to the teachers and the principal in the building that they're excited that they do have some relief with these trailers, that the teachers will gain back some of their uh, planning time in their own classrooms, and they'll have room uh, to teach, which is good academically for the teachers and students at Dunwoody High School that they have more room. You, you, you're right there to a certain extent, but I think it boils back down to the school board. If they duck, took a look at what was coming down the road and they should have been able to forecast some of this, they could should be able to already build some of the buildings to incorporate those students. Okay, we got a motion on the floor. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Passes five to two. John, John and Jim.